What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Zach Dressler Show. I'm Zach Dressler. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you can, please hit like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. We're putting out content on a weekly basis there. Shows, big reviews, other stuff that's coming up. If you want to just listen to the audio portion, you know, check us out on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher. We're everywhere. 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 What's going on, Indy? Doing, doing well, man. Yeah. Good to see you. It's good to see you too, and, man. And as I say every week, you know, it's I don't get to see anybody, so it's right. It's, Indy, it's great. Uh, and and as I say every week, Indy and I have only been seeing, you know, like we're we're distance. We're in opposite rooms. We do the protocols. Two different rooms. Two different rooms. Fifteen feet away. We're all set up. Um, it's uh, you know, it's we, we got it. We got it locked down. We've been doing this so far. Knock on wood. We we haven't uh, we haven't gotten sick, but. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think uh, you know in the next maybe handful of episodes we uh, we won't have to wear masks inside. I think it'll be. I'm uh, hoping. Be fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I'm not wearing my mask, but um. Well, your talent. Sure. Talent doesn't wear masks. I know. Yeah. I know. But again, I should be. But <laughs> you're quarantined. I, but again, can, I've been quarantined. Yeah. been safe. Um. Quick before we get into a couple topics, you know, and I want to make this quick. Uh, the guest today, a fantastic actor comedian writer uh he is the other half of the chris and paul show uh paul valenti will be joining us at paulie valenti uh i'm really excited yeah get that horn going i'm really excited to chat with him uh we're gonna talk i mean it's gonna be a long conversation it's gonna be a lot of fun but it's gonna be entertaining paul's gonna talk to us about um you know nbc is uh he was on him and chris were on NBC's we bring uh we bring the funny bring the funny so he's gonna talk about the whole audition process you know just just the whole process in general and it's it's really it's a really cool interview uh you know I want you guys to stay tuned and listen to it um but speaking of going back to the vaccines I'm trying to get a vaccine man I'm Aren't trying we all, to, I mean we're talking about I'm not wearing masks but I'm trying and I'm not trying at all you're not trying at all. No, I mean, I haven't looked. I mean, I'm trying to get it. Yeah. I'm not an anti vax No, no, no. no. <laughs> I hear what you say. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, so out, I'm out not. I'm not, and I'm not spending all my time trying to like skip the line here. I finally have qualified. Yeah, uh, you with stand my, out back of an alley of with a, my of type a two diabetes. Going, yeah, <laughs> you got any extra? <laughs> got any extra fix? Yeah, but I'm looking. I mean, I'm not like adamant. I'm seeing people who are adamant who are a lot younger than me getting this vaccine. California's slow, man. I mean, it's a big state. It's a big state. It's huge. So it's it's got it's got it's going to take a little bit longer for everyone to get to. We'll get there, man. We'll get, we'll get there. there. But seeing like all my friends in New York and New Jersey who are starting to get it, I'm like, I'm getting antsy because it's just like, I know. I want to get my shot. I know. I want to get the vid, bruh. We all want to be out of this, man. It's it's. And, but here's the thing: we know that time. even after this, it's not it's not a it's not a pass to go and be doing whatever you still got to be you got to still got to be careful so be cautious do the precautions wear yeah, your it's mask. never going to be an overnight fix no it's we got to wait to dwindle see. away and because we still don't know the long-term science of a the virus and b the vaccine right yeah so yeah but uh well, you know get I'm it not, in me get, yeah, it, in get me. it in me <laughs> stick me with I don't a care about shot. the side effects. I want to like ride a roller coaster. I know. I hate needles, <laughs> and I'm interested to get this needle. Like to to be honest, at this point, I don't care. I'd rather die than see a than not see a movie. You yeah. know what I mean? Like no, I like know. kill me. Like Did you see uh, uh who was it? Was it Nolan? <laughs> Nolan was the first one at uh, AMC Burbank Theater when it opened up on Monday. Oh, I don't know what movie he saw, but some people said he really? was sitting. There. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. At Disneyland is opening on April thirtieth. Yeah, saw that today. Are you guys excited today? about that? Oh my god, Tori is is really Tori's good. a big goer, huh? She's she has uh, barely any uh, uh, immune system, so I don't know if she's gonna go. <laughs> hey, are you were, are you were you guys like a um, uh, oh the, annual the pass? Card? No, I no, not she's as big as a fan to have one, but we just never. Never pulled the trigger. Yeah, she moved to California like a couple of years ago. Oh, gotcha. Never, okay, got, gotcha. Yeah, and I I've lived here all my life, so like it was always never like a thing. Like like it's always like going to the beach for a Californian. Sure. Like sure. I'm not a surfer guy, so like I for a Californian and you don't surf, you rarely go to the beach. Yeah, yeah, I got <laughs> you. You know what I mean? I hear like, you. you live four miles away from it. Yeah, yeah, it's always yeah, that, it's, you know, it's sand. Whatever, <laughs> right, I don't care. Right, I'll eat my sandwich that, there right. if I want, but that's about yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, yeah, I I got excited when I saw that this morning, and it's, I you know, 
I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to see. Again, it's only going to be open to the immediate portion, at least at Disneyland. It's only going to be open to California residents. It's not going to be open to the mass yeah. public, which is going to be interesting because people are going to people fly out here for that shit. Right. Um, well, at least at least. Uh, oh, I mean, there's so many damn people and residents here <laughs> that's still probably going to be yeah. pretty yeah. tough. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, man, I'm. Pff, it's I, interesting, man. I'm just not, I'm just dying to get the fuck out of all this. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean here's the thing it's like you know light at the end of the tunnel this week you know i don't talk about much i mean i talk about my personal life i shouldn't say i never talk about my personal life but this week was a big big momentous thing happened for me i got a job i got a full-time job back into yeah, thank you back yeah. into the workforce uh you know i've been unemployed for about eight months now due to covid uh i was working at universal music group as one of their uh directors of global content and channel strategy and it just when COVID hit, you know, big over there at Universal. Yeah, you know, they, they give out titles left and right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a bullshit title. I was making videos for them and helping their artists make videos. If that, that's if anybody's curious of what that means, um, but it, you know, I after we went to lockdown three four months later, you know, budget cuts came and you know it's unfortunate what happened, but you know I understood and. Dude, it's been a process, man. Applying has been a process. Applying has been a process, and I'm thankful. It just it, it, it just feels like things are starting to 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 move in the right direction. Yeah. How fast that happens, who knows? But I just feel there's a little momentum. Yeah, it yeah. just it just it's a different vibe than 2020, right? You know, and I feel like it's again, it's still well, March. In 2020. There was just there was no fixing it. Now nothing. we're we're fixing it. There's vaccines. There's you, vaccines. You, you There's still ignorant the people. There's still dumbasses right. doing stupid things. We're still going things. through the motions, but largely it's it's uh, hopefully going to dwindle away. Now they say, you know, with all these reopenings, that there is going to be another surge, but nothing like it was. Right. You know, the, right. The, and there's the other the variants and, and all that stuff. Yeah. So I just got to be careful. I just got to wait until I get my first dose. And uh, you know, after talking good, to Caroline. Man. You know, last week, part of me now wants that Johnson & Johnson vaccine and not the Moderna and Pfizer. I mean, you're talking to you about it, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But uh, speaking of which, real quick, before we... Uh, yeah, J&J. Uh, just a quick topic. Yeah. Caroline will be sending us some bagels from New Orleans. Oh, really? Yeah. Hell she asked me how many. I told her, you know, not to go overboard. I told her to send us six. Yeah. I told her, says, two sesame, two everything, and then two of her choice. Mm-hmm. So give it a try, and you know, however she wants to mail it. Some Cajun, I gave her yeah, style. some Cajun, <laughs> some clam baked bagels. A Dr. That would be John horrible. inspired uh, 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 second line tuba. Yeah, shape. exactly. Yeah. Some so <laughs> eat, I think it's etouffee. It's just a trombone. It just shaped like a trombone. That'd yeah. be great. Like an etouffee bagel, <laughs> which is I only know what etouffee was because it was a dish that I had when I went there. Yeah, yeah. but um, French Quarter, y'all. I French Quarter, yeah. y'all. <laughs> But speaking of vaccines, like I, I like I said, I really want to get one so this way I can see this guy that we have coming up here. Paul Valenti is going to be joining us momentarily. Uh, I, you know, I just I want to go home. I want to see people. I want to see friends like Paul, like Chris, like you know my friends from growing up. I, you know, I want to see shows. So, um, yeah, man, yeah. Let's uh, let's let's dial up Chris. Have a lovely conversation with him and uh, enjoy enjoy the uh, enjoy the interview. When was the last time we typically saw each other? Uh, I was, I was, I was, I was, I think the last time we saw each other was, I want to say 2013 or 14. I think it was like, I, I was, I did a show with you guys. I was doing stand up or something. I was right before I moved to LA. And yeah. I think that was the last time I saw like you, well, I've seen Rob before. I've seen, I've seen Rob out here, but I think it was like the last time I was with you and Chris and Rob and Adam and like the, you know, the whole, you know, even like like Luis and, and all those guys from city hall. Yeah. So, um, it's been, oh my gosh, 2014, dude, it's been, a, it's been a long time, man. It's been a long time. I have to say this. We don't look, we look the exact same age. Nothing has changed. You, you like, haven't aged. You haven't six. aged. Neither I, of you. No, nah, I've, I've, I've like, so I've like shrunk it. in and gotten bigger and like, you know, like gotten fitter. Like I've changed physically size wise, but I haven't. Oh, me too though. Like I, I fluctuate. I have I have a weight that I always go to when I'm not eating healthy, yeah. and then I can sustain it. Uh, but then I was like two summers ago, was it yeah, 2018? I got down to 190. Wow. 
I got that on a 190, and that was the latest I've been since, I don't know, since late I was, probably when I first met Chris. Wow. Yeah. And wow. then I ballooned back up to 230, and my doctor's like, dude. <laughs> See, I haven't been, I haven't been, hold on. Are we rolling, by the way? Okay, cool. We're just going to go with this. I haven't been 190, dude, since high school. Like when I left high school, I was at like when I like my fittest I was in high school was one seventy and I was wrestling. And then my like throughout high school oh. I fluctuated between one eighty and one ninety. And like I was like I then then I was like I'm so I'm so big. And then when I, when I like I mean the heaviest I've ever been was two ninety. And that really was, yeah yeah no, that's two thirty for me. Yeah. I did two two ninety was when I did um Zach and me. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. And I, I put on all that weight. I remember after, like, even even when I came back from doing doing the whole, you know, um, shooting, I just started eating normal again, which was still not healthy, but just like normal portions and normal things. And I lost mm -hmm. like like twenty pounds because my body's like, oh, thank God, thank God, you lost. we can't we can't maintain this. But do you, and it's harder when you get older. Oh, dude. And I still have ferocious appetite. I know. I don't I get know. full. Yeah, it's the same with me. I could, I could honestly eat forever. This, this quarantine killed me because I would just, especially the first three, oh, four yeah. months, because I was just like, I'm bored. I'm watching shows and I'm just eating, 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 eating. Yeah, well, I did. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like two thirty is like well for the pandemic, I got up to uh, to two thirty eight. That's wow. what I got up to. And uh, uh, our our mutual friend at D Blotman. Oh yeah. Dina K now she's married. Yeah. Um, I always know her as D Blotman though. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, D uh, was doing uh, Weight Watchers. So she's like, she introduced me to us. So I'm like, that's great. Tell me more about it. And then I started doing it. And then I got my mom into it. And so my mom and I really bonded over quarantine. And we started doing Weight Watchers together. Um, and we, my mom and I lost 10 pounds. And okay. then uh, my friends, uh, <laughs> my friends and I were. Uh, hanging out uh we we, we wanted the social uh you know my friend have a friend in new mexico a friend in boston and a friend uh, a couple towns from me and since we couldn't hang out we go like hey let's send each other beer and then talk on zoom for however long we can <laughs> and then that got really bad because like my friday nights are like i'm gonna drink and then i would like start snacking and yeah then my mom's like start, started losing more weight and i started like eh, going up and up and down and up and down <laughs> Yeah, no, it's the, so, same, it's the same with me. I, I haven't done, I've never done Weight Watchers. So this, the, that was the first time you've ever done Weight Watchers was this last past yeah. year? Interesting. Yeah, yeah I've heard, I've it heard an interesting thing about it. It works. It works? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I know it works. I mean, I've seen people work, do it. Um, I just, I never, I never got, I remember, I remember there were wrestlers in high school that would do slim, slim fast when they were trying to cut weight. Like, I just got to have a can of slim fast and then go to gym, you okay. know, go work out. So all right, so yeah, all right, so we both wrestled, right? What class were you? The one I so I could have I could have wrestled at one eighty nine, but uh -huh. the my my senior year, uh, the one eighty nine pounder decided not to wrestle. So everyone had to bump up a class. So I had to wrestle two fifteen, which at, you know, like I'm like I'm sitting at the time. I was like, that should be so hard. You don't realize how much like you know, tw like fifteen sixteen pounds makes a difference when you're wrestling. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. huge. So I, my senior year, I wrestled. There were only two times I wrestled at 189, and then every other time I was wrestling at 215. And when I wrestled 189, I was I was fine. I was able to handle myself, but I was handling some beast at 215. And one time, there was one time that senior year because our heavyweight and heavyweight, I don't, I think it's the same for you. It was 275 between 215 and 275. That's what a mm -hmm. heavyweight is. And so we had back to back meets. Our heavyweight was there the first night. The second, the the second match, the next day, he got sick, so he couldn't make it. So I had to bump up to two to do the heavyweight, and I didn't have. I, I was I was light at this point. I was I was barely being able to make two fifteen. So my coach brought me like they allowed you a two pound allowance that day, you know, because it's back to because it's back to back meets. So yeah. it was like a meet on Friday, meet on Saturday. So instead of weighing it at one eighty nine, I had to weigh in at one ninety one to get to. 275 so my coach gave me like a five pound weight to put in like my, my my junk and i like stepped onto the scale and i broke 193 and all of a sudden they're like okay bring in the heavy weight pounder from riverdale and this dude comes in and i was like of course it has to be this guy today and weighs yeah. in at 
274.2. I always remember that number because I was just like, okay, this guy's got like a legit 80 pounds over me right now. <laughs> and so I ended up uh, uh, fracturing a rib it, when, when I was wrestling him because... Uh, Do you know when it happened? Do I know how? It, yeah, oh, I know when it happened. The exact moment. Do you know the exact moment? Like, oh, yep, that's yep. That. So I, I took him down, and it was a stall. So you know when you stall, the person who's you know who is losing automatically has to go on all fours in front of you, and you get to you know come from whatever side you want and like try to take him down again. They blow the whistle. Yeah. So I, I, I came from the left side. I always remember I came from the left side, and I went. I was like, the only way I'm going to do this is either try to smack his arm, and and try to roll him in a certain way like bend his arm so he goes on his back and when yeah. i did that i hit it and he fell but i didn't I, I forgot how big of a dude he was my left foot got caught under his like hip and so he yeah. just rolled over me and my knee went into my chest at the same time so I'm, i hit it and i just felt i heard snap and i just it was like a steamroll i couldn't move i felt like paralyzed i thought like something else happened and like they're like, yep, he's pinned, he's done. They, you know, they hit the th hit the mat, and yeah. I couldn't get up. It was, I felt like it was like in my mind, I felt like I was a cartoon character, like Tasmanian Devil who gets steamrolled by sub one and yeah. it's like flat on the pavement. <laughs> Dude, it was the most painful thing in the world. What did you wrestle at? What was your weight? I wrestled at one eighty nine. Okay. Uh, and then my junior year, they cut the one eighty nine and made it strictly heavyweight. Is that, so is, wait, one, is, that, is that Connecticut? Are you, yeah, right? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So one, what was it, 189? Uh, so I guess they made it like, what was it, one, whatever the classic, 177 or it something. It was like 171 this. to 189 and then 215. Yeah, well, they cut 189. I don't know why. I think that whatever they lowered or whatever. So I was 189, and all of a sudden I had to go into heavyweight. And that was, so I started wrestling in middle school by accident. Um, I was staying out for the uh, for detention <laughs> with a lovely English teacher. She was Miss Griswold. She was the sweetest lady. She's the one that said to us when we were in the class, she's like, "Okay, you guys are all in eighth grade, and just let you know your childhood is over." I go, no, 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 it's not. I don't want my childhood. I, mean, I was still watching Ninja Turtles by then. I yeah. was far from over. Um, but I just remember, but she was a sweet lady, and she really liked me. But of course, I wasn't. I wasn't the best student, so I had to stay after in detention. And uh, I remember in class, uh, I was it was after school, doodling on a piece of paper, whatever, doing my homework. And these two kids come in that I knew. Um, I don't even know anymore. One of them was Justin and someone else. Like, they all knew that I was I was bigger than because I stayed back. So of course I was bigger than everyone. In seventh grade, I stayed back and first right. grade. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I wasn't a good student. Um, so uh, they go, Miss Griswold, Miss Griswold, can Paul come and wrestle? There's this kid that's beating all our friends, and she's like, Oh, oh, and she looks at me and goes, Well, Paul, you think uh, if I let you go, you'll do your homework? I'm like, Yes, <laughs> <laughs> of course, I will. Like, all right, go, she said, Go defend our school. I'm like, Oh, that's cool. So I go down there, and there's this kid. I actually still know, we're, you know, know of. We're, we're Facebook friends. He found me a couple years ago. Martin Yanni. And him, he was stocky. He was like, you know, five foot five, but he's like, you know, wide. Built like a brick. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I walk in, and, and as soon as I walk in, he's winging people left and right. <laughs> and all these kids are like, oh, yeah. It was crazy. It was so, so I was like, all right, whatever. So I go and I know like maybe two moves from the wrestling coach coming in from high school and teaching us. Uh, and he comes at me, I grab him in the hole and I slam him down. I pin him. And he gets up, wets his head, and he comes at me again. And boom, I did that. He goes, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> so now I think I'm, I'm the shit. Right. And uh, so I go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do wrestling. So I did okay. My freshman year, I went 11 and 2. But I didn't do that. I was I was I was second string. So when they put me in, I was I, I did pretty decent. Um, and then I got the when I got the JV, there was this kid ahead of me who was not the greatest wrestler. But I don't I don't know why because he was a senior. Maybe they put him ahead of me. 
but usually how it works. A, usually how. Yeah, it works. he was like a, 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 a dumpy or whatever. He, he wasn't he had no built to him. At least and I was a little stocky. I mean, it wasn't. The, I didn't look the greatest in a singlet. But at least who, I had. Well, well, well. Well, let's be honest. Who looks good in a singlet? Like even even when wrestlers, even when like professional wrestlers wear singlets, like the Big Show, it's Kurt like. Angle looks great in Kurt Angle looks great. All right, Kurt Angle, and I'll give I'll give Andre the Giant because I don't think anything yeah. else would look good on that guy except for <laughs> a whole like singlet, you know? Yeah, yes. Yeah. But um, so I remember. So I think it was a sophomore, and the coach comes to me. Well. Rich doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to wrestle, so you're in. I'm like, cool, yeah, of <laughs> course I will. Rich. So, but Rich no, didn't know, but I didn't know that the kid that I was facing was Allstate. You know, <laughs> 189, built like her angle. I mean, I mean, have you know, physique like yeah, Jesus. So I get in there. He has the perfect like his gear was barely. You know, it's like you get scoffed and everything. Like yeah. I just remember it. Being, perfect his hair was perfect and i go whatever so i didn't care i'll fight anybody and so we're going to man i just thinking nonchalant you know because i usually to take my time he goes at me hits me in the head when the whistle rings and then goes for me i'm like oh i try to grab him and then he starts toying when i say his crotch is in my face i'm here boom I'm like what happened <laughs> what the hell happened i was so angry and i get, just walks away i'm like and then, oh, yeah, he's all, the kid's like, you know, all state, whatever, won awards. I'm like, great. <laughs> so I was like embarrassed. But the thing is, I had actually quit wrestling because, well, one, they were in the, they, they moved that. So all of a sudden I was facing these big guys. I'm like, there's no, there's no reason why, because I'm, you know, I'm uh, five, six, five, seven at the time. And, you know, don't have a lot of experience or a lot of weight. Right. You know, my weight was mostly fat at the time. I was just starting to work out. And I was facing these guys for 230, 240, 250. And I was like, no, I can't do it. But um, there's this kid, uh, Dave Carroll, that I used to wrestle with. And we were, we were partners. And uh, I always had an advantage on him. I, just, I, was, I was better than him. But once he got the best of me one time, but because I started passing out, I'm like, why? I, I'm grabbing him and I'm blacking out. I go, what the hell is going on? And he grabs me, he's beating me. He's like, are you messing? He whispered to me, are you messing with me? I'm like, I, I don't know. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> so he let me go and I fall and the coach comes up to me. He says, what's going on? I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I can't breathe. I can't. So they took me to do the doctor. My blood pressure was through the roof. No way. Yeah. Fuck. So I had high blood pressure. I was like, oh, that's what it is. I dove to the side and I grabbed water and I threw it on my face. Cause I just felt like it was horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I laid on my back, and that's when I was like, "So yeah." So then I had to quit. I had to quit um, both football and wrestling. Yeah, they're intense. They're intense the sports. Order. Because I used to just go home, and this is my action: refridge. That was my that was my exercise: the fridge, open right. the fridge. And I grew up in an Italian household, and there was always leftovers. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> you know. I love so, how I love how I love how though the teacher it felt like your your the start of your wrestling career was like the beginning of like a yeah. superhero Marvel movie. Right? Your teacher yeah. was like, "Well, you can leave detention if you take care of the bullies outside." You're like, "All right, well, I guess I'm a good guy now. Let's do this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. It was cool. She was such a sweet lady. She's like, "Yeah, you got detention, but you know what? School pride." She's like, "This is great." I love so, those teachers. Yeah. I love those teachers. Yeah, I. Uh, when I got asked to do it, I had like I had no idea how to wrestle either, and I was the only wrestler that had to eat to put on weight. Like I was the only one that did, never had to like starve themselves really? or cut. Yeah, all my friends were like, you "Son of a bitch!" Like I like all my friends were like, "We we love you. We're not hanging out with you during wrestling season because you're the lucky one that doesn't have to to cut weight." I had friends that would go from like you know they were one sixty five you know most of the year and they would cut down to one forty five. Mm-hmm. And I was like, God, that's you know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. Yeah, but, we we had a freshman year. This kid, uh, Joe, oh, I forgot his last name. He was a freshman, and he was fighting at one hundred three. But he was go. He was hitting. He was he was uh, going against his growth sprout. Right. He ballooned up to one hundred and sixty pounds in sophomore year, from one hundred three to one hundred sixty. He was in. He was in uh, the locker room spitting. Before weighing, because he couldn't, he was just trying to, he was go. he was hitting 105, like, nope, get back in there, go yeah, in the go shower. Go sweat, go do out. something, go lose some weight, yeah, it's nuts. 
crazy. Not, yeah. A lot of the times our 103, our 103 pick, we would forfeit. We would forfeit. I think I think my junior year, my senior year, we actually wow. got a female to join the team because mm-hmm. she was under 103 and it was just, you know, like she she knew how to wrestle a little bit, mm-hmm. but it was, you know, from a coach's perspective, it was like to, to, to get the points. To get yeah. the points. I, I, think wrestled, I wrestled a woman at, at 189. Did you really? I wrestled a girl. She was really good. She was she was good. She uh, she got a couple of moves. I'm le- I mean, I, I won, but uh, I was like, damn. I was like, that was respect. I yeah. went up there laughing. I was like, you're you should good good. She's like, you're great. She's like, oh, thank you, thank you. I was like, it was cool come on. Like I was like, it was. So, I was like, oh girl, but I was like, whatever, cool. But it was it was awesome. Yeah, how, it's it. how awesome. She was, like, she was a smart one. She knew exactly what to do to me. Yeah. And I was like, luckily, I had enough experience. No, nah, wrestling is, it's, it's, it's a part, it's part strength, but a lot of smarts. Cause you got to figure out like, you know, the angles, trying mm-hmm. to hit someone, you know, the way they are so to get them on their side, whatever it may be. I but, know. Um, well, Wanna wrestle. What's that? Yeah, let's do it right Wanna now. Wrestle? Let's go. Come on. <laughs> oh, I, I used to do the tap, tap too, the tap, tap on the head and yeah. then sweep the leg. Because yep. it's, that's the first thing you tell me, like sweet that, and also uh, I don't know if you guys were taught, I don't know if you were taught this, but um, the five on two, five. Oh, the fist. No, it was a dirty move. So if you're getting pinned, five on two nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what. Like, you would no, just you would just no. hear on your back. You would just hear on your back, and all of a sudden you hear the back. Five on two, five on two. It's like, are we playing basketball? Like, what's going on? Like, is it a fast break? <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're like, "Oh, hello!" Uh, <laughs> it was so so bad, so bad. But um, well, let me ask you this: when you well, lost, that was a great interview. Thanks. Uh, for have me. a good night, everyone. That's it. Thanks so much, Buffalo <laughs> Dude, coming on. <laughs> it's all we're talking about is wrestling. But no, with the weight loss thing and performing on stage, did you feel like? Because I haven't. I've only performed at my heaviest. I've never been on stage when I was at my lightest. And mm-hmm. I just wonder, like, how much more energy I would have, or like, did you feel better? Because I remember there's sometimes I would come off some of Chocolate Cake City, sh- you know, shows, or like some scenes, or even improv scenes when they got, you know, sometimes they just get really intense, and I'd be oh, out of breath, out of shape, and I just wonder like how much better I would be if I was in shape. Do you find it better, you know, when you're doing you know stuff with with Chris that you're better when you're lighter? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, here's here's the thing. So there's definitely stage rust, I, I believe. Of course, but uh, there was a time where Chris and I were performing uh, three to four shows a week at one time, and uh, or several shows a month, and it was fine. It was always it, it was like going to the gym, so it was it was good. We knew our pace and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then when he did Book of Mormon, we we didn't really perform. Uh, then we did a, a couple shows. Um, between when we came back from Book of Mormon from Bring the Funny, yeah. we did a handful yeah. of shows, so we didn't really, we weren't really like we knew we still did moves and still went through the obviously everything was, you know, in our heads. So we we're just like a machine. This we knew everything, but uh, when we did Bring the Funny, there's we didn't perform for almost like three months at that time, and we were in an audition, <laughs> and we did the we did uh, the 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 robbery scene and the whoopee cushion. Yeah. And afterwards, it was great because I never got a standing ovation in an audition before. I was like, wow, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> so Chris and I are standing there going, all right, guys, well, thank you. Do you have five minutes to talk about? Like, yeah. Um, so uh, so we started and we could, couldn't breathe. Like, and we looked at each other, what is going on with us? So, They're like, well, and, you almost had the gig. You almost had the gig, but unfortunately, you guys passed out uh, because yeah, you're right? out of shape. Okay, so thanks for joining in. But, but I, I do, yeah, I, I do feel a difference. I feel more agile. You know, I, you know me. I, I roll around the stage like nobody's business. Um, you are, an, you are an incredible. I mean, you're an incredible actor and comedian, but your physical comedy is brilliant. Like when oh, I, 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 like b- b- with you and Chris, it's just. This this awesome duo, and then that's what I love about you guys. Um, just in general, it's just an awesome duo to watch. Like I can never not not take my eyes off you guys on stage because you might you blink, you might miss something incredible, you know. Mm. And I, I just, yeah, I don't know. I just I want like the 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 watching you guys like when I when I was doing when I was watching you guys, I was like I can't do half those things, man. I was so heavy at that point, but. That's for, we can talk about this some other time, but I want to talk to you about bring the funny. I really want to talk to you about bring the funny, um, because I, you know, 
what was you know, I know I know the story of what happened with the Book of Mormon. I heard that from Chris, but I'd really get to, you know, I wanted to talk to you more about, you know, the bring the funny. What was the audition like? What was that process like? How did that come about? Did you like did you have to apply? Did you, did like people reach out to you no, to uh, submit? Uh, we had a mutual friend. We had, we have a good relationship with uh, People's Improv Theater. Okay. You're very aware of it, right? Yeah, I love that uh, place. That's, that's been a staple. Unfortunately, they they're one of the big theaters closed down. Yeah. They we've been with them on and off since 2004. Yeah. And we've always had a good relationship with Ali. And then every artistic director that came in would say, Hey, you got to check out Paul. You got to check out Paul. You got to check out, I'm sorry, not Paul, Chris and Paul. You got to check out Chris and Paul. No, just and me. Just came, me. Just Paul. Forget Chris. Just Paul. Paul, just Paul. Um, well, I would network. And I mean, Chris was always like, uh, behind the scenes creating the 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 Chris and Paul show in his head. I, the way the way I, I think of it is like me playing Chris's head. That's why I think the Chris and Paul show is. Got you. And uh, so I would be like but I would be the business person. I would be calling a pit, talking to people, getting to know everyone. Well our friend Jeff Lapine, who we used to perform with in the National Comedy Theater, who ended up being an artistic director in like two thousand eight, I believe. He says, I want to get you guys here consistently. I'm like, great. So we started this run where we did uh, seven to eight shows a year yeah. for two and a half yeah. years. We did, I think we did a total of 16 shows within the span of two and a half years. All new, all the all, every day, a show, yeah. a new show every time. Every each month. We, I remember it was incredible. Yeah. Uh, it, it was it was a, it was fucking awesome because it's from a, you know from a, a stage performance to be able to do because again when you're a stand-up you do the same material almost night in and night out you change jokes here and there but when you're doing yeah. sketch like to be able to write material and crush it i feel like on a on a monthly basis is it, it's it's a hard thing to do i mean unless you know you have a, a a team full of writers behind you like an snl type of thing when it but when it's yeah. just you two it's it's you know there's a lot of pressure on that i feel uh yeah yeah there is um so so yeah so go bring the funny so that basically what happened is the, again knowing the artistic director alan uh alan mccray uh he saw our show he loved us he wanted to, he wanted to get kind of get us more involved with the pit because we were just starting to make our comeback but chris and i were like we need a new show we need something different we didn't we we felt we were moving sideways and not up like every time we did a show, right. fine, it's great. Right. We, we'd sell out, but like, okay, now what? We're we're when we're doing a show. We're kind of every time we did a show, we would write you know three or four new bits to pack it, and we. But it was good to perform again. They're like, oh, what do we do now? So Alan reached out to me, emailed me, says, "Hey, I have someone who's uh, who reached out to us and looking for sketch groups. I wanted to put your name in the hat before." before uh i let everyone else know um because they're gonna i'm gonna send some sketch troops out there so i said yeah sure and it was it, chris and i have been so much we, we've been like you know we sat we had meetings with comedy central we've had meetings with isc a couple yeah, a couple different places and we're like you know when you when you first hear like oh, this is amazing oh my gosh this is it this is it you know we had so many this is it so when this came around I'm like yeah cool whatever yeah kept, 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 put my stuff in like get, get the email I sent the three or four clips and then didn't even think about it. And I told Chris, oh, by the way, I sent it. was all right, cool. I sent something, whatever. And then I get an email like maybe a week later going, hey, this is so-and-so from NBC. I'm like, oh, cool. That's neat. Could you have any more stuff? So then I sent her two more bits. And then the next day it goes, hey, can you guys Skype with us like the next day? So I called, or no, I was working at a bar. This is when I moved back to Stanford. I was working at a bar and I get a phone call and I didn't recognize the number, but I saw it was LA like, hmm. <laughs> so I run in the back and I go, hello. Hey, this, I forgot her name, was, maybe it was Ashley. I can't remember. But uh, she's like, my, 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 uh, my boss really likes your stuff. Uh, we, we're hoping we can Skype you guys tomorrow. I said, okay. I'm working right now in the middle of the shift. I'm going to give you Chris's number. I want you to call him, and he's going to set up everything for you. So I called Chris up. I said, "Here's here. Uh, this person's going to contact you. We're going to Skype tomorrow. Figure it out." He's like, oh, "I'm working. It's cool. I'll, I'll, I'm on it." <laughs> so, uh, so the next day, 
and we go and set up our thing and they they skyped us and we talked for about an hour and they just want to know our background and all that and it was around november of 2018 and this is just before the holidays kicked in right yeah they're like great oh we love you guys you know this is what we're doing we can't name the name the show just yet but we were looking for our unique acts and we we really like what you guys have uh so we're gonna get back to you we're gonna show a couple more people and we'll get back to you I'm like okay great didn't hear anything until just before christmas i get a call from this guy every time we talk to someone there's always someone new of course it's never the same person yeah it's, it's, it's probably repeat hey. conversations of the things you've already had with oh, all these other yeah. people yeah hey uh so this guy calls me and says um hey i just want to let you know you know we're, we're thinking about you guys he says we're showing your stuff to executives and uh we'll get back to you and i was like all right cool just want to let you know we, we just we're we're things are going on all right, all right cool then i don't hear anything for all the rest of december all through christmas yeah. all through new year's and now i'm at work and now i'm getting a little antsy i'm like oh, do i do this i was talking to a guy at work he's like paulie paulie you gotta call him paulie <laughs> man come on he's like eh, i don't know he's, he goes, I don't know if I should push this. Like, no, Paul. He goes, you've been persistent all year. The stories you tell me, you've always been persistent. Call them. What, what are they going to do? Say no? I'm like, yeah, you're right. What's the worst they can do? Like, we're going to get mad at me? Oh, right. Oh, he called. <laughs> well, forget them. We're, we're about to put them on. Oh, no, they called. Screw them. So I was like, How dare so they I'm... be determined? How dare they be yeah, determined? I know. So I, I called the guy back, and he goes, hey, Paul, I was just thinking about you. So sorry. He's like, we've been, we've been uh, showing your stuff to all the executives. And he goes, just to let you know, we showed it to the top executives. And I'll, I'll tell you something. Um, the executives never laughed. And they showed the jury one. And he goes, Paul, he says, they laugh their asses off. And he goes, we really love you guys. So give us some time and we'll get back to you as soon as you can. So I was like, all right. So I called Chris. Like, wow, hey, wow. That's, that, that gave me goosebumps. Like, cause I, you know, yeah. I can't imagine how to hear that about a top exec, you know, loving your stuff and then they never smile. You know, that's like something that you, yeah. you dream about hearing and then you hear it and it's, oh, I got chills. I got chills. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. I was in my car going, okay, this is great. And so I called Chris up and I told him, told him what happened. And he's like, great. So I was like, I guess we're just going to wait. Uh, I don't know whenever they don't know when they're going to, they were thinking about filming in July or August. So again, another two weeks goes by. And like, ah, ah. Yeah. Finally get a call uh, February 2nd. And it goes, Hey, we might need you guys either to send something else or we're thinking about flying you out. So are you guys available February 13th, uh, 12th, 13th and 14th? Uh, and right away, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Well, let me check my schedule. I'm like, I just, uh, it is Valentine's yeah. Day. I don't know if I can it really move that. Day. Yeah. Then, so yeah. They, then they, they flew you us. out. If, then they go, okay. Actually, we want to see you in person. Okay. So we'll fly you out. So Chris and I flew out there on the 12th. No, was it the 12th? Yeah, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, and we get there, and uh, the the it was it was the Burbank uh, Burbank Hotel, and our friend Evan was there, and uh, he's great. Evan's always been you know, when it comes to rehearsing or anything we did in L.A. Evan was our, our was our guy. Right. He's seen us through the years. Um, so Evan picks us, and we had no idea where we're going. So Evan gets, I say, hey, do you mind? I don't know where this hotel is. Do you mind picking this up? It's a Burbank hotel, whatever. He said, we'll be at the Burbank airport. So we get all in. We hug each other. Like, I think I had to go pee. Like, let me go pee before we go in, whatever. So I get back in the car, and Evan starts to drive, and he puts, he pulls out of the parking lot and hits start, and goes, uh, navigating to Burbank Hotel. Boop, you have arrived. It was right across the street. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, great. Thanks. We'll just walk across the street. Appreciate your help. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my so God. So we should be not laughing. So yeah, we went in there. We, we, we checked in. And 
it was really weird because everyone kind of knew us. So we walk in and this guy comes over, shakes our hand. You know, that time when we could be able to shake hands, talk to people face to face. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Fly without masks, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And he goes, oh, yeah, you, we're wait, we've been waiting for you guys. We're looking forward to seeing you. We're like, what is going on? Everyone was just so cool to us. And and uh, we get to the, the, the thing. Oh, uh, we get to the um, the desk to check in. Oh, are you guys Chris and Paul show? Are you here for the show? I'm like, yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, no one told uh, us, but okay, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, Paul, here's your key. And Chris, here's your key. You're 403 and you're 406. I'm like, uh, oh, we got, we're getting separate rooms? Like, yeah, of course. Like, and like, because Chris and I were so used to, yeah. when, he, when him going road, we just, we would bunk in the same, you know, the bed. Save, save you know? money. Unless you, unless you have the money to spend on your own room. Every, I mean, I remember when we went to Montreal uh, Comedy yeah. Festival and it was like me, Rob and Adam all had to split a room, you know, like all that stuff. It's, you know, you save yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't have to pay for anything. It was great. So, but we didn't know what to do. So we hung out in each other's room. <laughs> it was like, just talk about what we're going to do. And, and the next day it was like, I think a, Three or four o'clock, we go into, um, we go into, we figure out what we're gonna do. Like about, probably a week before we left. How and many? How many? How many things did you plan on doing? Like, were you like, this is, let's go they with just this. Said, do, do five minutes. Okay. Yeah, five or seven minutes, whatever it was. We go. Okay, we were like uh, the Whoopi cushion. We're gonna bank grab it. Would work. It'd be perfect. So when we so when we got there, we rehearsed a little bit all the, you know, the night before. And then we get there and we see a ton of people. And I noticed some people from the pit, which was pretty cool. Um, and we just kind of stuck to ourselves. We didn't really talk. To, I think was Evan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Evan was, yeah, Evan was there because we asked Evan to do our sound. Nice. So, so when they get there, they, they, okay, Chris and Paul, you're up. And we were in from one conference room. We had to go to the other conference room. And, Evan had to go in there first because Evan knew the sound. We, we Evan knows when to hit it. So he said, you want to tech? Like, no, we got a guy. Is that cool? Yeah, sure. No problem. Evan goes in first. And now they're making us up. So the guys go, so when you get in there, just start your act. And I said, okay. So Chris and I start talking. We start game planning. And I'm like, uh, Chris says, yeah, you know what? Let's just start it as we go in. I, I said, okay, good. I'll go in. I'll go in the corner. And then you come in and do the whoopee cushion bit. So when I come in, I just go in a corner and I see like there's like 30 or 40 execs and they're <laughs> all on the line and they're all all typing on our thing and taking notes. And there's two cameras there and there's a huge light. I mean, everything was like big NBC, big NBC, NBC. So I go in the corner and I wait and I hear Chris come in and I, I Chris goes, Shh, just like you did in the show. Yeah. So I tell him, quiet and so everyone was looking at me and then they all you could hear all the people like shit to chris you know it's funny because i guess when you're performing you're you're really in tune everything like everything is you hear and and feel feel everything yeah yeah so chris does a bit we go into we do the whoopee cushion boom then we go right into the bank robbery boom and that's when we and all of a sudden we get the ovation. Ah, this is great. Two people are standing up. I'm like, and then we started breathing, <laughs> breathing heavy because you know we're out of shape. <laughs> and uh, so they goes, you guys got five minutes to talk? Like, yeah. <laughs> of course we do. So they go, yeah, you guys are great. We really loved you. Um, uh, do you have anything else? And we're just talking about bits and all that kind of Dude, stuff. I feel like every time they've asked you, like, do you have anything else? Do you have anything else? Like, yeah, we had tons of shit. Just put us yeah. on the show and we'll show you. I feel like we'll oh, show you. it's like, we, yeah. how much more stuff do you want? You know, uh, I don't know. Right. Uh, so we, we get out and there's this woman, at least that, that from that time, basically was with us the whole project. And Elise comes up for us. He says, "Hey guys, <laughs> so uh, do you do that fill in all your paperwork? Yeah, all right. You sure you signed everything? Yeah, yeah, we signed everything. Okay, uh, you have a spot in the show. <laughs> We're like, oh, okay, cool. What? <laughs> 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 what? And I looked at Chris. I'm like, what? It's like, did she say we just got? A-? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. I'm so excited for you guys. You got a show. You got a show. Like, Should we don't, wait, ta- wait, don't, wait, tell, wait, anybody, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. 
Yeah, yeah, we're like walking back. We, we just got out of the room. She comes near us, and we're walking back to the room and the uh, the, the other the, the green room. And Chris and I sit there and go, "We're on the show. <laughs> like we're we're on the show. It's crazy. We had no idea what the name of the show was just yet, but we knew we were on the show. That's awesome. That's so till that then. Yeah, we and it's like exciting. So at that time, so the first person I called because uh, my family knew kind of knew what was going on. Um, and, uh, I, un- unfortunately my grandmother was sick at the time. So like, I got to call my grandmother. Cause my grandmother's the first person to say to me, she's like, I remember, <laughs> uh, bless my mother. She, she's amazing. She's a great supporter. But when I first started acting, she's like, really, Paul, get real. <laughs> I'm like, and then, uh, and then when I started doing it, my, I remember my mom was doing my, my grandmother's hair and my mom goes, you, my mom's like, Paul, you know, it's, it's hard to become, you know, she, 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 obviously she's being a mother, of course. Of course, right? of course. She's looking, she's looking out for what she thinks is your best interest and in protecting you. Yeah, of course. of course. And my, my grandmother turns around and goes, no, don't listen to your mother. You do anything you want. You're going to make a ball. Your name's going to be in lights one day. I, I, I promise you. I'm like, oh, okay. And a 20 year old kid going, ah. I even, I, was in, I think I was still in high school at the time. So the first person I call, I called my, my aunt and my grandmother lived together and I call. My aunt, I said, "Hey, uh, I'm sure is, is Nana there? Can you put can you put me on speaker?" So I said, "Nana, can you hear me?" And uh, she said, "Hey, Paulie." I said, "Just to let you know, I'm gonna be on national television. We got this show." And then my mom came down, and my stepdad Tom came down, and everyone was just like, "My grandma." She said, "My," she said, "I knew it, Paul. I told you. I told you every day. You're gonna make it. You did it." I was like, "I said, like, because of you, you pushed me." Uh, so. Yeah, so that was that was uh, February thirteenth. We got the call, and then we were gonna start filming. Uh, gosh, in uh, what was it? We started filming all of April. So unfortunately, my grandmother died in March sixth. So she knew I was gonna be on TV, but unfortunately, she didn't get to see me on TV, which sucked. Yeah, I would love to see her face, but if you notice and bring the funny, um, if you see me tap my pocket. I have a picture of my grandmother and me uh, in my pocket. So I was like a little tribute Aww. to her. So yeah, so it's I remember it's it's you know, not to be uh, dramatic or, no, or down, not at all. But, uh, but when when she when she uh, when she died, we all went to the uh, we all went to well we, before she died, she she you know what it is? You break your head, but she's ninety two. I mean, she lived an amazing life up until a week before she died. She was still running up and down the stairs. <laughs> I mean, the woman's amazing. I have her DNA, so I'm pretty amazing too. Of course. So, so, uh, so we all go and see her in the hospital. I was supposed to take her to the hospital, then she ended up falling. So, uh, we go and see her, and she's she's a little dizzy. She's she, she's not really waking up from. They gave her some pain medicine. So we all left, and then as soon as we left, like 20 minutes later, we get the call. And I was supposed to have a meeting with one of the producers that night. So I had to call her and say, yeah, I can't do it tonight. My grandmother just passed away. She's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Uh, so they were super, obviously, they're super cool with it. Yeah, yeah. But um, they, uh, they, um, what happened? Oh, yeah, so we went back to the thing. And I remember being the last person out of the room. We, we all said our goodbyes. And we went back in the room. And I, I sat with my my grandmother who wasn't even my grandmother anymore but i thanked her and i and i was holding her hand and i said i'm gonna go win this show <laughs> are you gonna go do it or at least make a pretty damn good impression and so that was my drive and i tell you um when we well the first i i, I channel my emotions when i did whoopee cushion you know getting out getting upset yeah. and then after i did the cookie and then we got called to the finals. I broke down. I cried. I was like, ugh. You know, I, I yeah, had like, of course. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, this, you know, her wow. moment of like, oh, I wish she saw the cookie, but. Man, I'm, fucking, I'm tearing up over here. <laughs> <This is laughs> I'm fucking, sorry. No, dude, this is, that's incredible. That's, I mean, oh, man, I'm, well, I'm sorry, you know, about your grandmother and, you know, all that stuff, obviously. Uh, but. but she knew, she knew, well, even that, like, she started, she had a leukemia, so she started losing her memory a little bit. Yeah. She couldn't say her, she couldn't read her birthday, but my mom would go, hey, where's Paul? They go, and she, she's going to be, she, he's going to California to be on TV. <laughs> I love so, it. 
he knew. Uh, yeah, I mean, that whole experience is like, I, I'm like, this is something amazing and something crappy is happening at the same time. So there's all this emotion. And it was such an emotional ride for Chris and I just being there. So that, yeah, that was like, uh, at least telling us right then and there, it's like, it didn't hit us. Yeah. It didn't hit us right away. And we just sit there, oh my gosh. So then Chris and I just got right to work, flew home, work, got together almost every day and just rehearsed the crap of what are we going to do, discuss what we're going to do. Did they give so, you like uh, like a, an outline of what, how the show was going to run from week to week? So this way you could no. kind of plan or was it all? Well, they knew. So we knew uh, you guys have the potential of staying all of April, but once you get eliminated, you're going home. So Chris and I were, were thinking like, okay. Well, we need to figure out what we're going to present first. Yeah. But we just want to yeah. make a good impression. We just don't want to look bad on TV. Yeah. That's yeah. what our fear was. Uh, so we decided to go. We were going between three or four different bits to start off with. We were talking about bits that we never even did it. We were we were thinking about doing the jury one, um, which we did in uh, for audition. But they were surprised. And one of, someone came up to us and goes, you know, I saw two or three of your bits. I didn't even see these ones. This they, these blew me out of the water. So I was like, "Oh, thank you." So they, so a lot of our stuff is physical. They're like, "Oh, this is great. You guys are definitely different from what we've seen so far." I'm like, "Oh, that's good." Uh, then yeah, what was it? Uh, Were you allowed so, to practice these bits like on stage at other places? Like you know, if you try yeah. them at the pit. Oh you know? yeah, yeah. We well, we we did a show. We did a show um, a month after that. Okay. I think. I want to say we did a show before we left. We it may it was hold on, hold on, February, March. Yeah, we did a show on March thirtieth to kind of feel it, feel out what we want, what we want to do out there. Then we decided what we're gonna do, and we originally wanted to do the cookie for the finale, but our producer said we everyone had different. So Dan had producers, Sketch House producers, and Variety Act had their own producer, um, and. Uh, our producer, she was she was amazing. She was so good and so in tune with us and got us and fought for us, which was great because we didn't come. I mean, we, we, Chris and I know the business, but this is like we don't have a lot of experience with TV. Right. So we would express ourselves and, uh, yeah, the, our producer would be, would be right behind us all the way. And she would, uh, like, there was a long time where, like, she said, hey, guys, the execs, they, they, they think you should do this. And we look at Chris and like, no, that's that's kind of stupid. We don't want that. She's like, no problem. I'll tell them. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I was hoping you would say that so I can ruin their dreams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Sierra, she was great. Uh, yeah, Sierra, she she was pretty amazing with it. I'm, I'm so glad. All the roosters were great, but Sierra was really, like, always checked in with us and, and made sure we had everything we needed. This made um, you feel comfortable, which I think is important when you're, when you're, whether you're going on stage to a live audience or a live national audience. You know, it's important to have a producer like that that can calm yeah. you down and calm and your she nerves. Was full. She was dealing with yeah. several other acts too. Yeah. It, it was easier down the line. You know, when she was, she had less and less acts to deal with. Then, you know, we were when we got the the finale, and yeah, it was all. It was just. I think it was just. Did she have? Did you get? Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, Valley Folk there. Yeah, I think she she's producing Valley Folk also. Did you guys get? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, my girlfriend is friends with them. Uh, yeah, she knows them a lot, uh, very well. Did you get? Yeah. Sorry, what? No, we were just fan. We were just fanning over everybody. Like we knew. We well, knew, uh, Indy and I know Keith Habersberger from Lou Burger. Yeah. Oh yeah. We we, were, we, yeah. we we knew of them through Try Guys. Yeah. So yeah, I was like Keith. Oh my God! Is that the Joe? Yeah, it's like only oh, all these people. Like this is cool. And we're hey, we're fans of you. And then they saw us. We're, like, we're fans of you. I'm like, yeah, cool. We're all friends, right? <laughs> it's a huge fan club. Yeah, though, which is great. So yeah, you would you want to ask? Well, did you get like you, you know you you had you know the producer in the show were like you know pumping you guys up? Did you guys get advice or tips or encouragement from like the host from like Jeff uh, Foxworthy and and Keenan and and you know or even like dinner recipes from Chrissy Teigen like <laughs> did you get any of that stuff like did you get to interact with them at all or is it just yeah strictly yeah, on the show the first we did whoopee cushion the first with the first show yeah 
I remember that. And you know, we got we got a great compliments uh, compliments across the board. No critiques, no background. We were worried because we were backstage, and they didn't play the sound, but we saw the judges talk to the acts. I'm like, oh man, this is gonna suck. Can you see the acts like being deflated? It's because you know they're getting critiqued. Like, like, oh gosh, what's is that gonna happen to us? But we went out there, we did it, and afterwards they come. <laughs> It was six hours of waiting backstage, waiting to we're gonna to figure out when we're gonna be called to. Oh wow, the recording out. was six hours. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, so okay. we were waiting the whole time, and there was twelve acts performing, and only six went through. So we're going nuts. We're backstage. I'll get. I'll get to the the the, uh, the judge in a second. Yeah. And. <laughs> So they're like, they're crazy going around the camera. People are going around, they're filming us. Hey, can you guys do bits? And we're like, yeah, yeah, sure. And Remo, like, just leave us alone. We want to like, we want to, uh, you know, just find out if we made it or not. And then there was one point where one of the, uh, one of the uh, sound people came over and put sound on us. And then they go, no, not crystal ball. No, not crystal ball. So they took the mics off. Like, oh, what, was it? what does that mean? Does that mean we're, we're can't, what happened? So we're, it's, it's stressful. And, uh, you know, I don't have much as anxiety as Chris does, <laughs> but uh, you know, so I I looked over. I don't know what made me look over, and I sat down and I saw a piece of paper, and one of the, the what the paper had who was advancing. I'm like, ah, damn! Oh, good. <laughs> 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 you're like, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, and then you're like, yeah. Oh. So I saw Chris and Paul check, and then the other one scratched out, and I go. Ah, I didn't want to look. Ah, because I was afraid. To, I didn't want to see that we were not going through not, without Chris knowing. Right, right, right. But the other way, I was like, "All right, this is not bad, right?" So did so you tell? I did come, you tell Chris, or did you hold it off and like you know? Act no, I looked at him and go, "I go, we're okay." Because what do you mean we're okay? Like, trust me, we're okay. <laughs> he goes, "What?" So then I told him later. I didn't want to say it out loud. Right? I just got to ruin the show. No, of man. course, That's of course. Fire. So I told him afterwards, like, oh, gosh, like, I didn't want to hold it from you, but I didn't want to, like, I just wanted you to relax. Like, trust me, we're okay. And then we went <laughs> we got on. this. And- Don't worry about it. I got a guy yeah, who's going to get us through. Everything's fine, huh? Relax a little bit. <laughs> so then uh, after we got called to the to the stage, um, we got called, like, third or fourth, which is pretty cool. And then uh, – uh, the judges came up to us and Jeff Foxworthy came up to goes because I haven't seen anything like that. You guys barely said anything and you got a ton of laughs. So Chris goes, Oh, well, I think you're going to next, you're going to like our next act. <laughs> so he's like, cool, cool. And uh, uh, Keenan, Keenan said to us, that, that was, that was really good because I I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have next. Nice. And then Chrissy's like, "Your humor, it's so dark. Keep it. I love it." <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. So it was just a lot of compliments. Um, but during during the show, uh, they were just saying. You know, I remember uh, we were filming something with Keenan, and he came up to us. He's like, "Chris and Paul, Chris and Paul." So we're having a conversation with Keenan Thompson on a Universal set. And I'm just looking at Chris. We're like, what are we doing? This is amazing. <laughs> it's funny because they started bantering over their kids, which is pretty cool. So they bonded. So we were talking to Keenan for like 20 minutes outside, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. And, and then we did a performance sketch with them. But they were, they were just very, oh, they were all very encouraging. That's cool. Uh, basically, it's basically saying, uh, reinforcing how, how you guys are good. You guys need, you guys need to show. You guys should be on. In Vegas, like yeah, yeah, we should be in Vegas. Like, we should be so, in Vegas. Uh, you want to produce us, or <laughs> you know? So this summer, Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, opening up for Britney and then closing for Britney. Yes. Right. Yes, I would love that. Yes. So, but are you guys touring? Like, I mean, now that the country is slowly opening up, what is your plans? Like, what are you guys? So we have a local theater in our town that wants to do something with us. We might see if we could do something. Obviously, once we get the vaccine, yeah, 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 uh, is so. Hopefully, the next month, we would like to do something there, at least for our hometown. Kind of get back into it, mm-hmm. film it. We we film a lot of our stuff. There's stuff that I wish we filmed earlier in our career 
that I go, oh, I remember, remember that moment. Do we have that on tape? No. Ah. <laughs> but now I was, I was, now I'm into, uh, you know, my, I have a good dear friend, Johnny, who has been a huge supporter. He's like, background doesn't want, you know, anything, doesn't want to know anyone or anything. Right. Um, but he's always been brutally honest with me. And he goes, what are you doing? Why are you doing all these shows and not filming? Ah, eh, they're going to come out crap. But yeah, like, why aren't you putting money into this? And do like, you need to, you need to do, you need to film everything you do. And I was like, yeah, you're right. He was like, it's going to look crappy or just film it. They always push it. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So probably since like 2013, 14, when we started doing, oh, uh, no, no. Yeah, I guess like I, I figured out like no, I need to put money to this. So or I would pay someone to to film us. Right, right, right. Uh so yeah, that that was great. So it was cool being out there and everyone kind of, I, I felt bad because I wanted to tell people what happened, what we're doing. I couldn't say anything. Well, I remember I remember seeing photos of like you and a D and like grabbing pizza and I was like, mm-hmm. I wanna I wanna join. I didn't even know they're out here. I I wanna hang out with the gang and you know, and then yeah, I and then I I figured it out. Yeah, I know. I should I should have. I should. I'm ter- here's the problem is that like as I've gotten older, I've just been terrible with like keeping up with people. Like even with a D, I haven't seen a D. I think in person since 2018. Oh really? Yeah, and it's 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 a shame because we we live very close to one another. I just think it's like as I'm getting older, I'm becoming more like a hermit. Like I don't go oh, out. Yeah. No, I get it. I like get 2020, it. No, yeah. even though as bad as it was, I didn't mind not having to go anywhere because I didn't do it. You know, and want to go anywhere in the first place. Yeah, uh, uh, D and I, uh, we're we're tight, and Evan, are tight. so I have like LA friends that I go to like automatically. Like, yes, of course, we're gonna you know, yeah. see them, but we, we try to we try to connect with all our LA friends. So next time we're out next there, time. we're gonna pull you out of your house. I'm down but, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that that the yeah, D's been always amazing, super supportive. I mean, yeah. we've we've got a lot of support for it. Was so good. It was almost like justifications, like. We know, and not to not to brag, but I, I I knew, of course, I know how good I I was reminded of remind Chris like we have this really good thing with, a, with this really good act. The right eyes need to see us. You guys, and you guys are fantastic, happened. and and it's and it's coming from a place of not just love but just honesty from me. You guys are humble. You guys are honest, and you guys are really great with everything you do. And I remember when we were performing together, you know the 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 chances that we got to be on the same stage, you know whether it was Chalk Cake City or independent stuff or improv, and Chris and Paul, I just always felt better going into a show, knowing you guys were going to be one of the acts because I like. I knew that everyone was going to have a good time at this, mm-hmm. at, you know, at, at whatever show we were doing. Because you know, you can go into you can go into some places sometimes. You're like, oh, this person's performing, or this group's performing. It's going to be an interesting night. Or, but I knew like every time we, we would, it, you guys just always fucking deliver, you know. And yeah. oh, thank you, thank you. We tried. You know, there's a lot of times where we just fall on our face, but whether it be a new bit or not, but we just yeah, you know, we love doing it. We loved meeting other people and being influenced by other performers yeah that's why i set up sketch block i didn't know anybody i knew a few, few handful of people so i'm like oh you know other people who perform get them over here i'll book them <laughs> that's what i would do and that's how i met you guys yeah I, I i i need i miss i miss doing live stage stuff i you know i stopped doing it i think when i moved out to la i used to do a ton of it when i was in australia i came back in new york and i think it was like when i was coming back from new york go you know from australia going back to new york it was just like I felt like I had such a rush from being in Australia because I was performing so much in front of great audiences. And you know, when you yeah. go to, you know, when you're performing in New York, there's some nights you got great audiences, and then there might be a week of shows where you get like maybe five, six, seven, eight, ten people in there, and you're like, ah, this is, this is the grind, this is the grind. But I, 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 you know, I miss doing, I miss, I regret doing it, not doing it enough. But I'm hopefully like I, I got to change my mind going forward. Um, yeah. But you said something interesting before, and you know, I, I know I've kept you on I'm almost an hour now, so I'll let you go That's soon. Fine. Don't worry about it. But I remember it's interesting what you said before about like wishing you filmed stuff earlier or filmed everything you've ever done because it's, it would only benefit. I, I wish I did the same. And do you? I mean, you know, the age of technology. Do you kind of wish we had this like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok? Like when we were younger in '90s, like in high school, because it might have changed the or or quickened our career path in that aspect, you know, or pushed us to a different level. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I want to lean towards no. 
Okay. Because I feel like we know you don't have like, these influ- influencers. They could just, you know, pop a thing on and all of a sudden they get, you know, 60,000 60, likes or whatever it is. We, our validation was here in the crowd. Yeah. That, that was, that was, that was it. If just for us, I love, love, love the live stuff. Uh, do you think, yeah, do you think I, people, I, do you think live stuff is losing its, its pizzazz, not just because of the pandemic, but before that, because of all this instant watching stuff, 15 to 30 second, one minute videos that people are turning out, because I'll be honest with you, I'll, I'll watch some of this stuff. And people are like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm a, I'm a comic. I'm a comedian. And it's just like some of your stuff's just not funny. It's just like being some people are being bombastic or outlandish or doing some crazy dance. I feel like you guys yeah. really, you know, it, it, your stuff can be adapted not just for stage but all different platforms. Okay, so live, nothing's going to be live. I think when anyone, you take anyone to go see a live show, I mean, if, if, if they're into theater, that is. Yeah. There's nothing like it. That's yeah, cool. yeah, you can laugh at a TikTok or Instagram or something funny and then share it with a friend. But being at a live show, whether it be a concert or anything, it's you you check in with the person with you. I'm like, we're this is freaking cool. Like when Chris and I, every time kids in the hall came to to okay. Connecticut or even close to Connecticut, oh, yeah. we, we gotta see kids hall. We gotta, we gotta. We watch them on TV so many times. No, I want to see them live. Yeah, and yeah. you just get this feeling of, ah, oh, this is this is great. And Chris and I'm like, this, how cool is this? Oh, this is. And then they go start. And Chris and I, our minds start going, oh, this would be cool if we did something like this for our show. And blah 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 blah. You know, so that's nothing's ever going to be live. I think people don't appreciate it until they see it. Go see a live show. Go yeah. see concerts. Go see music. Go get. A, I'm glad I got to see Michael Jackson live. Yeah. Like the, or, that was like, I wish I saw Prince live. I want to see Tom Petty live. I want to see George Carlin live. A lot of things. Like, I want to see them. I want to feel their energy. Yeah. You can't get energy off Instagram. Sorry. No, you can't. No, 100%. 100%. You can't get that. Yeah. yeah if, I, everyone's like, oh, you should post. You put things in it. But but yeah, then I want that to keep up with it and try to be witty and do an, a post. You know, it's like. It's honestly, exhausting. It, it is. <laughs> it is very exhausting. Because and writing, I, I writing think, the sketches and putting all on stage is a whole other beast and it's a whole other, you know, uh, mental capacity you gotta you gotta you gotta maintain. And then this whole medium is a different thing. And I just yeah, I, I, I miss doing I, I think live is the best, you know, the, getting the best. And like you said, you just you find out more about stage and theater and comedy and acting through live than you I would a video for sure. Right. You know. Do you think I mean how do you how do you so how do you see that I mean I guess, how do you see so here's everything? The thing. Chris and I, a lot of our uh, community friends are starting to do shows or they've been doing shows, especially stand, mostly stand up. Right. Chris and I are very immersive. We use the audience. When we're in Charlotte, which is a year ago, a couple of days ago, I can't believe it. It's crazy. Uh, we're in Charlotte. And when we landed, uh, <laughs> we found out that there was two cases of coronavirus like are you kidding me like this is like it's happening like this that that's where like okay what's gonna happen here so chris goes well people might be a little weirded out because we had 30 cancellations luckily we still had a crowd of 60 which is great so but we had like chris like me me and people are maybe afraid so we thought like okay why don't we just use hand sanitizer in the show so every time we came out and we were going to bring someone on stage, we would throw each other hand sanitizer. We would sop our hands and, and just do a bit with it. And it got great laughs. And we use that to our advantage. But that's something we can't do. You know, I don't know, be part of the act. I don't know. So once we're able to use people in the, in the audience, I think it's going to be helpful. We have several bits, but I think that using audience members i mean i just think it's a it's it's a, a huge whole unique thing that we do yeah oh absolutely yeah it, it 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 captivates the audience because i feel like a lot yeah. of times audience are being talked to you know they're they realize that they're it's a twofold it's like they realize that the audience that they're there to laugh 
you know, but then they also want to, half of them also want to be participating. And I feel like when you do that, you really make, you bring everyone into the audience. Everyone's captivated. Everyone's focused on what's going on. You know, you can't really sit there and like listen to a joke and be like, ah, well, that's cool. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, wow. They're, they're bringing someone in. This is, this is going to be, this is going to be wild card right here. Yeah. I think it, and it's funny how you do that because you know, you're looking at a screen and you're just kind of, you know, going through it, going through emotions. But when you're live theater, you're sitting there and you're looking at everything we're, we're, we're we are giving them uh we're we're giving them an atmosphere yeah like this yeah. stage we're not just two people but we're giving them a new whole new world which you um which social media will never do no and i and i, I challenge people to go to a live show and like meh that was all right i'd rather look like i would rather look at a tiktok no no. Nothing ever in life theater. I mean, that's why Broadway is so will always be successful. Okay, if we have, absolutely, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm just, I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, because I, you know, the pit close, all these places are closing. I'm hoping that, you know, within a year, all the, a new places open to give an opportunity for all these, you know, because it's it's hard to find places that are warm and accepting and, and a great stage. You know, I mean, how many bars did we perform and we're like, what, what kind of fucking stage is this we're on? Like, the audience is over yeah. this way, the stage is over here, whatever it may be. Rafifi, yep. Rafifi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, to name Rafifi, anything, yeah. Rafifi. Yeah, well, they, they closed down too. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say that uh, I was uh, our, our good friend Rob, uh, he, him, he and I were talking about this which he actually he called me. I should call him back. Sorry, Rob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get lost. That's another thing. I just like, I get lost. But, oh, I got to call Rob. Oh, I got to call Rob. I and then goes, ah, oh, I forgot. No, he knows I'll call him back. Much love to you, Rob, if you're ever listening to this. He um, I'll make he better. He better. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we talked about it. It's like, he made a comment. It's like, it's going to be like the old West again. It's, if people are going to find bars, people are going to start performing and uh, this. The Mo Pickens, the Rafifi, yep. uh, Rose's Turn, the Green Room, like, all these things that nostalgia we found. in my like, mind. I love it. What's that? You're naming all these places. It's so nostalgic. Oh, right. Yeah, right, right. Uh, I mean, the old tank, which was in a basement somewhere, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was great. It was grimy, but it was great. Man, I'm, uh, you're making me ho- so homesick right now. I always want to move back home and just, and just like this summer, just go and just do bar shows and like you know sketches in in places, man. Well, that's what what that's going to be again. People are just going to do that, and then someone's going to open up another theater again. Yeah, and it'll be the pit point uh, two point or whatever. So it's just going to happen again, and maybe people will appreciate live live theater more. Like, oh, where you know, where where's Zach playing? Oh, he's playing yeah. at the underground. Like, oh, what's the underground? And it's like, there's always an underground. Every city, there's, there's the this, underground. There's the underground. We're performing at the underground. Come see us. Well, yeah. one more question before I let you go. Quick question. Yeah. You're Italian. All right, Italian <laughs> roots. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. I get to fight with people all the time, and I know pizza's not traditionally Italian, especially when you're old school Italian. But uh-huh. being that you are a tri-stater New Yorker in my mind, I mean, you're from New York, the New York area, Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? <laughs> See, I've had pineapple on pizza. Sure, so have I. Do you like it? Uh, Do you think it, it should be a staple? No. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. That's it. That, that and that's and that's and that's what I wanted to hear. I wasn't gonna get no. mad if you said yes. No, it just no. I mean, I mean, I've had. It, I'm like, it's okay, but if you give me an option of, especially no. If you go to a, a, a Jersey style pizza and yeah. you see pineapple on it, then something's wrong with the place. <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly what I, that's exactly what I say. I mean, yeah, if you're yeah. getting your options, I mean, what is your what is your go to slice? Is it plain? Is it pepperoni? Is it sausage? Is it? I it also both? every time I have a new pizza place, I have to go with the cheese first because I need to know is their cheese good? Because if their cheese is good, then the toppings will be good. My my own, my go to was always uh, sausage and peppers or sausage and onions. Yeah. Sauces, mush or peppers and mushroom, those kind of you know vegetables, and not overload it. Just just give me a just give me a taste. Yeah, because if you put too much, it it becomes too soggy. It doesn't taste as good. But I agree, the cheese yeah. slice. You always have to do one cheese slice and a slice of your choice that you want with some toppings because you got to take the cheese yeah. slice first yeah. to know if it's a good place. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah, I gotta love pizza. I can eat pizza anytime anywhere. I know, but I need the sauce needs to be good. The sauce needs. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. 
hundred percent. For me, it's it's the sauce. Yeah. And so what someone used to come like, Paul, what makes a great pizza? I'm like everything no no but what is it the sauce the crust i think it's a crust but i was like no it's it's everything it's it's a, called a pizza it's yeah. like it's everything to get that's what makes it a good it has every ingredient has to be the crust has to be great the cheese has to be uh, good and, and slightly crisp and the yep. sauce just the, like i need just, a little bit greasy a little bit oily because i know i know it was made with love that way you know like it needs yeah. to have that tender uh yeah i we can go on days for pizza bro can we just talk about pizza for the next hour for sure we can <laughs> i'd love to i'd love to um but listen man i really appreciate you joining me i know uh, it took an hour of your life but i i really appreciate you no i on. love this honestly i could do uh, I, you know i miss you dude um i i'm gonna be home this summer uh i'm not gonna say over here when i'm gonna be home but i will hit you up i'll be home for a month um late man. late summer uh like around july august so I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold this. Yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna I'm, I'm gonna be home. I'm gonna be home uh, for for a month and then a, a week after that because I got uh, a couple weddings I got to attend to. So I'm gonna be home for a long time. I love to catch. I want to catch up with you. Let's go meet in the city. Let's go. You know, hopefully I'll be. I mean, everyone should be vaccinated by then, so we're able to hug and fucking enjoy it. Yeah, or at least you know, kind of hug. Whatever. Whatever. I'm gonna go uh, for the hug. Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, if we're both vaccinated, and then that's just a chance we're just gonna have to take, you know? Exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's worth the risk. Uh, so Chris and I uh, are doing our our podcast finally. Yes, I was listening so, to it. I was listening. I was gonna. I, I had a bunch of questions because I listened to not the last episode, but the episode before about you know going to high school parties and what you were, you know bringing Taco Bell. I didn't know you worked at Taco Bell. I had so many questions about Taco Bell, but oh <laughs> Taco Bell, I'll never. Uh, but gosh, I, you know, that, bringing 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 t- mini tacos to a party. Oh uh, yeah, I have stories for you for Taco Bell. I mean, yeah, but I, I love I I do love the podcast because I love the sketches you have in them. You know, especially the front. Yeah. So we're trying to do that. originally it was supposed to be when we're on tour. We're gonna do. We're gonna talk about what, life on the road and all that kind of and stuff. You will, and, and that will happen. And that will happen. Because you're like, oh, well, so now what do we do? Yeah. And by the way, this is the longest Chris and I have not performed ever. That's crazy. In the 21 years we've been together, this is the longest. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. I think I forgot how to perform. No way. It'll be a little rust for like a two shows and then you'll be fine. I, forgot. I didn't even know how to drink anymore. Okay. So. <laughs> um, well, on that note, I'm going to let you go so you learn how to drink, my friend. I miss you. I hope to see you soon. Go check you, out Paul Valenti at Paulie Valenti and go check out uh, at the Chris and Paul show, right? Is it at the Chris and Paul show? At Chris Paul. Yeah, yeah. at Chris Paul. Uh, no, at Chris Paul show. At Chris Paul show. All right, go check out all this stuff, man. Uh, I'll see you soon, man. Have a great night. Thank you, Zach. Kisses. <laughs>